Hello everyone and welcome into this really really special and requested video because in this video we will be making a I'm not gonna I, I don't know if it's a legendary engine or a famous engine but it's it, this is a special engine because this engine was made by the Soviet Union yes I'm not kidding this engine was made by the Soviet Union and the name of it it's called the Zaz. 1102 or the 1 1.1 liter version so this was a requested version or a requested engine um well i'm looking up for his actually his username that i'm gonna write right now but uh, it's a typical four cylinder engine that was made that was made uh, i don't know in the 70s 80s something like this but uh, what i really like about this engine is how how this engine is extremely low on power really really low on power so before we so before we crack on with the video uh, enjoy it that's my number one priority and I'm, I'm looking for his username and i really cannot find it really i can't find his username so uh all right i, I will write his username in the editing so yeah uh, it's a typical it's a typical four cylinder oh here we go this is this is his username so his username or his name is met749 so yes four days ago uh, he said, hello, please build the, the Tavria Zaz 1102 1.1 liter engine. All right. So he actually provided me with these specs, uh, which they were extremely helpful. And now let's say, let's start with all of the specs. So as you can see, this is a, a card that we have seen in the previous video in the, in the GTI result video. This car was built by a cool fan uh, to, to participate in the GTI challenge it was a little disappointing uh, disappointment actually when it comes to specs but when it comes to styling the styling is actually very nice so what I did with the car as you can see is I've changed the I, I made some changes like the fuel filler cap some badges and of course the side mirrors and uh, I, I made the front headlights a little, a little thinner so yeah just to just to give it a little little extra cool look I kept the same color and the same uh, rims and the same specs up there like like those rails and everything else they are still pretty much the same with some minor details so the chassis the body everything is still the same but I've changed the materials uh, instead of using a steel a steel body I've chosen aluminium and the chassis is now a chassis is now monocoque made from light advanced high strength steel and this the engine is mounted on the, in the rear of the car not, not front engine not, not mid engine it's rear engine car which seems very appropriate and the suspension now is McPherson front and rear with zero quality so this is the first version which is the stock version the stock naturally as aspirated version which is uh, which is actually a carbureted version Ex excuse the coughing noise in the background that's my that's my brother he's sick actually that's why he's coughing but yeah so uh, let's crack on with the specs this is the Zaz 1102 1.1 liter this is the stock version uh, so as you can see it's a typical four cylinder and I've been reading the Wikipedia forum about it it was made by the Soviet Union and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right the Zaz I don't know if it's correct if it's wrong maybe I don't know because I don't speak Russian I don't speak uh, Ukrainian that's why yeah I'm pronouncing it like this so it's an inline four engine cast iron block 72 millimeters on the bore and 67 millimeters on the stroke which equals 1091 cc engine single overhead camshaft with two valves per cylinder aluminium cylinder head yes it's aluminium cylinder head or al aluminum whatever you want to call it no vvl of course forged forged steel crankshaft which i found very 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 unique and pretty useless because the pistons are made from just cast materials and the connecting rods it's still forged the crankshaft is forged also for no obvious reason because with forged internals that means the internals can take tons of torque and they can rev higher but the pistons cannot do that the pistons cannot rev that high the pistons cannot cannot actually take that much of a torque so using this combination is actually expensive and useless because the forged internals are they require a lot of extra work, extra machining, and putting cast on top of them is well, I don't, I don't actually understand why. Because if you want to use forged internals, well, also use forged pistons so you can rev the engine higher, so you can 
put extra torque on it but actually when, when you see the, the final result no you, you will understand why the pistons are cast because this engine is extremely low on power really really extremely low on power so as you can see minus 15 quality to keep it to keep it extremely cheap and well it worked fine this way moving on the compression ratio is 9.5 to 1 which seems seems very normal and good actually 37 on the cam profile no vvt of course minus 12 quality and naturally aspirated of course we have a single two barrel carburetor on top standard intake manifold i'm running it on 95 octane fuel and uh, fuel mixture is 13.2 the ignition timing is 39 RP, the official rpm for this engine from the factory was 5600 rpm or 5600 minus 5 quality on the fuel system short cast headers single exhaust pipe 2.2 inch exhaust diameter although it's very useless because you don't need that much of a size but i had to use this size to put the correct uh, power and torque figures on it no catalytic converters i'm not sure if the real engine uses a catalytic converter or not so i've chosen none uh, baffled first muffler and a reverse flow second muffler to keep it quiet and minus 15 quality for the exhaust system and this is the final result 51 horsepower at 5500 rpm and 58.2 pound feet of torque at 3400 rpm not 100% correct in the torque but 100% correct for the power so i'm gonna say the engine in over in overall it's 99% correct or 99% replica of the real engine uh, the engine is acceptably acceptably quiet uh, the, the reliability well it's also accepted acceptable not bad the fuel efficiency well it's a little bad yeah 12.9 percent but for 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 any for an engine from the soviet union yeah i consider it good but in 2018 this is bad uh, the emissions are extremely high uh, the weight of the engine it's it's a small engine it's a 1.1 liter but I don't know, it's, it says 1.1, right? But it's only 1,091 cc and it's heavy, 77 kilograms for this, for this kind of capacity. Yes, it's a heavy engine. Uh, the engine is extremely simple to make, not much time to engineer, not much time to be produced. And it's not bad in any way, except for the power and torque. That's the, bad, that's the only bad thing in it. So let's fire up the stock version. This is the graph, as you can see, a very torquey engine at low RPM. Alright, now this is the, of course, the naturally aspirated version. And of course, I made another version, another cologne of the engine and, of course, with extra improvements. But now let's start talking about the car itself. What did I do with the car to accommodate this engine well it's rear wheel drive now it's not front wheel drive it's manual gearbox four speeds 142 kilometers per hour is the is the official top speed for this car or the if you want to talk a little scientific the final drive uh, is 5.13 to 1 the spacing is 48 which gives a first gear top speed of 47 which is the it's not really perfect but it's very very good this way because if i want to make this car to go extremely quick from not extremely quick if i want to make it to go quicker from 0 to 200 uh, I have to push the spacing extra extra higher and that will result in a, in a bad first gear because I've driven this car before with with the quickest 0 to 100 time setup and the first gear was topping at 22 kilometers per hour which was really bad but this way yes it, it's a little bit slower from 0 to 100 it's 14.5 right now it used to be 14.1 seconds but this way the first gear can go to 47 which seems more realistic when you want to drive it of course open differential because well the, the wheel spin this way is zero percent no wheel spin at all zero quality although if i want to go a little extra cheap i can actually push the quality to minus even in the car itself but it's useless i don't i didn't actually need, need to do that i'm gonna keep it the same because well check out the weight of the car 697 kilograms extremely lightweight and well 
although the engine is a little bit thirsty, but 21.5 miles per gallon. Not bad, actually. Really, really not bad. Uh, radial hard long life tires, 160 are the front tires, 175 are the rear tires. Alloy rims, well, I want to push it a little bit to, to the 21st century. 12 inch rims, 520 is the tire diameter, zero quality. Uh, drums, 2, 2LS front drums and SLS rear drums. Uh, no brake fading as you can see, the brakes are balanced 100%, not bad. Fully clad under tray, this is a modern touch just to make the car a little extra efficient and a little modern. 55 on the engine cooling, 100 on the brake cooling. Two seats, basic interior, basic infotainment system. Yes, we have an infotainment system, not an, an, AM ra an AM FM radio, no, a basic infotainment system. And if you want to read more about it, uh, this is it, the basic infotainment system has Let's see, four cheap speakers with two tweeters and a dashboard, a stereo, AM, FM, satellite radio, CD player, and an auxiliary input portable music player. So it's pretty decent. It's not bad at all. Uh, yeah, for, of course, for 2000 and it says 20 here. It should be, it should be actually 18, but yeah, I'm not going to change it. So no power steering, no ABS, pretty simple advanced 20 safety equipment to make it safe, although with the most advanced safety equipment it's still 36 point in the safety it's not really safe but it's acceptably safe moving on we have standard springs semi-active dampers passive sway bars pretty unique setup uh, positive positive half a degree of camber on the front tire negative half a degree of camber to the rear tires uh, these sway bars are really really thin especially on the rear uh, rear axle it's 1000 on the front axle the dampers are pretty pretty soft the springs are really soft the ride height is acceptable for the car and what we have here is 15 points on the sportiness 15 points on the comfortness 15 points on the prestige of the car the car is drivable it's acceptably safe it's practical uh, can do 21.5 miles per gallon it's extremely lightweight it's acceptably reliable 76 point that is surprising actually uh, it takes a, it takes quite a while, you know, to assemble, quite a while, of course, to be engineered. But the end result is actually acceptably nice for a typical city car that looks classic with modern touch-ups around it. is very very acceptable, acceptably unique. And of course, you can you can actually see that not much of people are interested interested in this car because well, it's classic, it's old, and uh, yeah, it's low on safety, low on drivability. It's it's thirsty. That's why not much of not, not much people actually are interested in it. And of course, with 20% margin, it will cost you $11,362, which I think no one will buy. But it's good, it's unique, and I want to drive it. So this is the natural aspirated version. Now, let's switch to the other version, the turbocharged version. Alright, so this is the turbocharged version. Well, when I said turbocharged, I, th I think some of you were actually expecting, you know, extra power, extra torque. Well, yes, we have extra power, but not, mu not much actually. It's 70 horsepower instead of 51. So extra 19 horsepower only just by the turbo. Yeah, and not much f extra fuel efficiency also, because it's a little bit extra heavy because of the turbo, the intercooler, and uh, other things that, that I maybe forgot to change. I don't know. So let's see how this thing is when it comes to the engine room. So the internals are still the same, stock minus heating quality, this, the compression ratio is still the same, the, cam the camshaft is a little bit different, still the same quality, but now we have a zero quality turbocharger. We have a single turbocharger ball bearing with a tiny intercooler 136 horsepower supporting intercooler 29.5 millimeters, 26.3 millimeters on the turbine, the air ratio is is acceptably small. The boost is 9.25 psi. The curve is actually pretty decent. The turbo will be will be working at its at its full chat at uh, 2,645 rpm, which gives you a, a 79 pound-feet of torque at that moment. 40 horsepower at the same moment. Not bad. So the, the carburetor is still the same, the same fuel, the air fuel, the air fuel ratio is a little higher than the naturally aspirated version. The ignition timing is a little bit less than the than the naturally aspirated version, which is 14 here. I want to try something. 
I want to try to lower the boost a little bit. Let's remember 9.25 9 and increase the ignition a little bit. So 9.25, that, that's the, that's our mark. So let's go to uh, let's go to 8, for example, 8, 8.10, and let's see if we can actually make extra decent power. Well, it's 70 horsepower now, 71 horsepower, and we have the same torque that we used to that we used to make on 9.25 psi. Is the engine knocking? No, the engine is not knocking, and we are running less boost. That means more extra fuel efficiency. I like that. Let's try to go a little a little less. So, 7.81. All right, more torque. That's what I want to see. More power, more torque. Okay, so now let's try and now pushing the boost. Not really good. So seven point six six. All right, all right. We have eighty horsepower, eighty pound feet of torque, seventy point eight horsepower. Hmm, not bad at all. Let's try something a little different, which is. Increasing the AR ratio a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the intercooler. No, it's not really doing anything. So I like the I like the results now. We have 71 horsepower and 80 pound feet of torque and extra fuel efficiency. Very good. The engine now is running much better. Man, the blow up valve is extremely loud. So the the differences are now we are now we have 30 ignition timing, which is much better. It's still the same air fuel ratio as before. The RPM limit is now 6,000 instead of 5,600. The exhaust is still 2.2 inch because, well, it's it's big. It used to be big. It's not really tiny. And so the same exhaust system, the same mufflers, the same quality, but with a turbocharger. All right. So now that's 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 the engine. Let's move on. Uh, let's see what we have here. Now we have rear wheel drive, manual, of course. Four speeds the same, but we have a different final drive because we the estimated top speed is 160, and I want to keep it you know close to it. So let's see, we have zero wheel spin. All right, one percent wheel spin. Let's see, 9.8 seconds, 9.8. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it 9.8 because the the zero to 100 time used to be 14 seconds. Now it's 9.8 huge difference we have 1.6 percent wheel spin which is better uh, 959 on the spacing open differential very good the same tires same rims good the same brakes but with the extra sticky pads or shoes uh, different brake balance fully clad the same still the same two seats still the same still the same safety still the same springs suspension perfect now now we now we have 71 horsepower, good, extra torque, and let's see the fuel efficiency. Uh, what is it? 24 miles per gallon. That's much much better. Increasing the ignition timing, lowering the boost, gave gave us more power, more torque, and more fuel efficiency. That's that's much much better. Uh, the car is now more sporty, more comfortable, more prestigious, and the same safety, more fuel efficient. The the emissions, I don't know if they are actually more or less. The reliability, reliability has dropped like 0.8%. And this thing cost 11712 I forgot, is it cheaper or expensive? I don't know, I'm going to check that in the editing. And uh, production units, is it more or less? Oh my god, I'm, I'm not really good at this. So, alright, let's try it in beamng.drive and see what kind of results we have. All right, we are back in BeamNG.Drive, and now we will be testing the uh, Zaz 1.1 liter 
<clears throat> natural aspirated version in BeamNG.Drive on the, sh the on the same short circuit on the automation test track. So a little problem with the car that I found. Something is scraping underneath it, but that doesn't affect the the handling or anything in the car. So don't worry about that. Uh, so let's see how this thing will perform. It's rear wheel drive. Remember that. Here we go. Go first corner. It's three wheel drive, remember. It's actually a little a little fun because it wants to overspin. Suspension is some sort of soft which is appropriate for the for the car. It's actually quick. Look at it. Nearly 100 kilometers per hour. And break. One Soviet Union extra power. Their engines were extremely unique. I don't know how much. How, I don't. I don't know why. Why is the engines making so little power? When I started making this engine, oh, so it's, it's really it's really a, a handful car. Not gonna restart the lap. It's a single lap, do or die lap. That's why we're gonna restart it. It's rear wheel drive. That's why it's extra handful. As I was saying, I don't know why these engines are producing low horsepower because when I was making it it was really hard to to choke the engine and to make it go low on power because the engine can make much much extra all right so one minute 47 for the naturally aspirated version now let's select the turbocharged version and see how it will perform all right so this is the turbocharged version and yes we have the same problem which is i don't know why the car is jumping because it will scrape to the ground i don't know but we have the same engine the 1.1 liter zaz engine and now we have a tiny turbocharger on it so let's see how it will perform all right here we go wheel spin powerful much much quicker and blow of valve sound because the engine is in the rear so you can actually hear the blow of valve nice oh much powerful much much powerful Turn in. Oh my god, this thing wants to drift. It wants to overspin. Don't spin, don't spin. ABS. Come on to the win. 147 to beat with a little wheel with, with, with a little overspin. Eleven seconds. That is actually very good. A really surprising car. I really liked it. The turbocharged version is much much more quicker. Yes, but no burnouts, of course. <laughs> yes, not much horsepower. It's, all, it's only 170. But you can do burnouts. I guess. It's open differential, so... I want tire fire. But it can spin. Yes. 
Good, good, good. Oh, entire fire, check it out. actually a decent car now I think I need to to increase the the stiffness of the rear spring rear spring so I can so I can make it to not scrape look at it I can fit it here awesome so that's pretty much it for the uh, for the Zaz 1.1 liter check it out drifting and everything Yep, yeah. on <laughs> over spinning. I'm spinning out, yeah. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this little beast here. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for, for the dude who requested this video. Uh, it was a quite quite experience for me to try and recreate a replica of a Soviet Union uh, engine. I really had fun, so hit that like button, get subscribed if you if you enjoy the video, and watch my previous videos because we have made much much uh, cool replicas like this one, and even more cool, more cooler and more crazier than this one. So have fun, enjoy, and watch my previous videos. And of course, if you want to request a replica of a legendary engine or a, a unique engine that that automation game can support, uh, tell me in the comments uh, in the comment section or add my Discord. Also, the link in the description below if you want to chat with me or if you want to request an engine over there or if you want to participate in future challenges if you like my videos and if you want to support my uh, my channel you can of course sign up to my patreon page so you can get this car and uh, of course m much much more unique unique cars and uh, crazier creations and crazy replicas and even more like behind the scenes and 4k wallpapers and of course you will be supporting the channel so also the link in the description below below and for my patreon page so thank you so much guys for watching and uh, goodbye for now my friends.